Hi everyone, my name is Jackie Merrick and I haven't come on to um, YouTube for a while and uh, shared anything. So I, I was feeling like that tonight. It's Saturday, September the 19th. I had to check my computer. <laughs> and um, just wanted to um, touch base with wondering how people are and what's going on. Um, you know, September is a time of many different things. So, you know, a lot of kids are heading back to um, back to school. And now with COVID, there's so many different formats of that. There's the doing online schooling. There's the kids that are actually going physically back to school. There are kids being homeschooled. Um, it's There's so many different things going on right now. I can't imagine what parents are going through. Um, trying to organize all of this and organize their lives through this time. And, you know, and it's a new experience for the children as well. They're, they're dealing with something in a new way that, you know, they're having to learn very early on about letting go, I suppose, uh, of what was. And this um, isn't something most of us went through. Most of us went through every September came and every September we went back to school in the same old way. Um, for me, uh, September was always that time of starting something new, starting something new, uh, because we all went back to school. And when I was a child, though, that was also a time of I had a lot of fear in me. So I think I want to talk about fear and fears that we hang on to today. But I had a lot of fear in me. I grew up as a very... Um, um, introvert shy very shy person and I was I would I was very shy <laughs> so that's a very uncomfortable feeling and I can see it uh, when I see it in other children I I see their discomfort I see how painful it is it's a very painful time you know, when you when you are afraid of everything and uh, for me, that's what being shy meant. I was afraid at home because of the situation that I grew up in. But I was afraid of meeting new people. And I was afraid of going to school because they would expect me always to put my hand up and give an answer. And I didn't want to do that. I just wanted not to be seen. I wanted to shrink into a little tiny ant and not be seen. I just didn't want to be asked any questions. It wasn't that I didn't know the answer. It wasn't that I wasn't a smart uh, child, but it was that I just was really, I just did not want to be there with all those people and having to answer questions in front of people. I just was so uncomfortable. So that was, I grew up with a lot of fears. And so it's, um, yeah, so fear was a big thing in my life in every way. I, I grew up in fear. I went out into the world in fear. I was afraid of everything and everyone. I lacked trust in people and in um, life in general. So I had a lot to work through. So I have been delving deeper the last 11 years into many, many uh, areas of my life and the many things fears that I've had to overcome and uh, you know there probably will always be some kind of fear that shows up I think that's uh, that we learn as we go along and as we let go of particular fears we can then recognize what fears are left to be overcome yet and um, so it was interesting I last night I decided to pull some tarot cards I pulled from two different decks and it so happened that two cards fell out of each deck. So out of the first deck came cards that related to freedom, to being free, to living, feeling freedom. And the second deck were, were cards that came out, two cards again came out, and those cards were related to not just letting go of fear, but related to basically relaying to me that the fear was now gone. And that now all was left for me to do was to live life, to embrace life and to live, to just be. And so uh, that was really wonderful to read, to read those cards, right? Um, and I know they're just oracle cards, but um, 
I like to, to me, it's, it's kind of interesting how they show up in your life when you decide to pull a card. Uh, it's often related to something you're going through. So I had noticed that, um, yeah, that I'd had a couple of conversations recently um, that were very interesting, that things that got communicated that have never been communicated, that I've wanted to be communicated. So it was really, uh, I felt that something was moving, something was energetically moving in my life suddenly. Um, I had just completed a 12-week program, so a lot of tools were utilized in that program, and I learned a lot more about myself, and I released a lot of fears throughout that program in different ways, with different tools. I learned how to, how to, you know, decide when you wake up to focus on how you want your day to go, like to focus on uh, positivity and positive energies and to focus on pivoting the energy if you were feeling something uh, negative coming about and how to pivot your thoughts so that you can get back on track uh, and have, have the day begin and carry through uh, the way you wanted it to. So uh, I learned a lot of different tools. And um, so when the tarot cards came up that the fears were now gone and I was now all that was left for me to do is to live my life and just be, it made a lot of sense. And I was recently reading a book that was about that as well. And the, the basically the book was about someone who had a near death experience and who uh, came back knowing that we just need to allow, just to allow life to unfold and to just be and allow our emotions of all kinds, every emotion, just allow them, let them come and flow through you and allow them just to be. And rather than trying to push them down, rather than trying to put them aside, um, any hurts that I ever had in my life, I just put them aside and moved on. I put them aside and moved on. I didn't, I didn't necessarily deal with all the hurts that I felt from my childhood on up um, in my life. So I had to find ways over the years to deal with those hurts um, and fears and so many different things. I mean, I grew up in a lot of fear. I lived in a lot of fear all my life just because I was a, a, an introvert by nature, but also because I lived in fearful situations in my childhood. So um, you relive a lot of that by the choices you make in life as you leave a dysfunctional home. So, uh, so it's like you, it, it's like a real free, it is freedom. So the cards that came up about the freedom, it is a freedom to finally let go of those fears. You do find you're now free of that. You don't have to put all the energy into that that you've been putting into all those years. So much energy goes into all these emotions we feel um, when we're trying to, to hang on to them. When we're trying, when we don't ever let go of them, we we put so much energy out into the drama of our lives. Um, and I guess we all have to go through that process. You know, it all depends on your circumstance and if you're in a relationship or not in a relationship or going from relationship to relationship or if you're in a difficult work situation or you know, if you're in a big family and there's family feuds or you have no family, it's, there are so many different circumstances for different people. We all have different ways in which we're living and we have different things that we've grown up in. So it's pretty amazing that relationships work at all <laughs> when you consider um, the many ways in which we were taught to... Um, to love or in which we were taught nothing about love. So uh, I, I, I had to learn about loving myself. That wasn't something I was taught. And so it, it's a worthy bit of work and it's a, it's a substantial amount of work 
It really is work to decide to go inward and work on you. It's a worthy, uh, it's a worthy endeavor, and I highly recommend it. I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist or anything of that nature. I'm just sharing with you my experience of life, uh, and I've come to a point in life when I I think it's okay for me to share that now. Um, yeah, when you've had decades of hanging on to things, when you've had decades of thinking you're not deserving and you're not worthy of certain things in life, of love, <laughs> um, when you finally realize you are, it's time to share it with people so that they know that it is possible. It is possible to love yourself. And so you have to nurture yourself. You have to connect to your heart every day. You have to connect to your heart every day and find out what you're feeling and allow yourself to feel. Do whatever you have to do to let the feelings be expressed. And if there are feelings that you are afraid to express, find a safe space or a safe way to express them. Find people that can hold that space for you or go somewhere by yourself where you can release anger, rage, or any kind of um, what feels like a negative emotion. You are allowed to have those emotions. It's very healthy to have those emotions. I didn't know that. I was afraid to express those kind of emotions, so much so that I really thought I never had them. I, for decades, I thought, I don't. I'm not an angry person. I don't have anger. But it's there. <laughs> we all have we all have every emotion at some point. We can all have the capability of, of feeling any emotion because um, we just we just tend to want to suppress the ones that don't feel so good and that might not look so good and we might think others would think badly of us if we express them. But uh, we have them and they need to be expressed. And you don't have to. You don't have to express them and take them out on others, but you do need to express them. You need to do it in a safe space and a safe way. Um, for me, I even driving in a car by yourself at night uh, in country roads and letting out whatever, crying, screaming, swearing, whatever, whatever it takes to release what you need to release. Um, it's really vital. For me, that was the safest way because I'm in an apartment. I wouldn't want to be screaming and crying and <laughs> carrying on in my apartment with the neighbors hearing me, so that, that wouldn't work. And I wouldn't be able to do it in a full-on way where I could really let it out. Um, so you do need to find the, the place to do that. But do do that. It's uh, really vital that you express all that you're feeling. Um, in the safest ways and places that you can. And uh, yeah, like we're human beings. We have a myriad of emotions. And if you keep pushing them down or pushing them aside and never feeling them, you'll never get to know and love the full you. You know, we don't just love the nice bits and the kind bits and the compassionate bits. It's easy to be that nice and compassionate and kind and loving to other people. But if you're not really feeling it in here toward yourself, if you're not feeling you're worthy, um, then that has to be felt. You have to find that way to, um, it's, a, it's a way to get to the wholeness of who you are, to love every part of you, the good bits and the bad bits what seem like the bad bits, but they're all good. <laughs> they're all good. Um, it's good to carry on, um, to, not to carry on, but to love all those bits. Because that's who you are. That's who all of us are. We all have the potential to, to express any emotion, any and every emotion. Um, so if it needs to be expressed, allow it. Let it be. Let it just be so you can be. It's very hard to be authentically you if you're holding all this stuff inside you and holding it onto it. There's such a tension inside your body 
that has to be released. And um, of course, meditation is a great tool. Um, all kinds of expressive arts are, as I've discovered in my passions, as I discovered my passions, are ways to release so much emotion, so much pain, hurt, so much. You can express so much uh, by moving, dancing, exercising, meditating, uh, writing, journaling, writing poetry. I've discovered so many ways to express things. Um, yeah, it's a great release. And for me, physical, I'm a very physical being as well. So uh, I need to move. I need to put my feet on the earth, especially, you know, not in the winter, but some people would do that. Um, but on the grass in the summer and the spring and get my feet on the earth. I feel so much coming up from the earth that goes through me. And it sometimes raises a lot of emotions in me. So you need to get in touch. Um, I don't like the word need. I really don't like the word need, so I don't want to say that. It would be to your benefit to uh, get in touch with what you're feeling deep inside. Every day, every day connect to you and connect to your heart and connect to your higher self. Um, ask your guides how you can, if you don't know how. Ask and listen. Listen in silence to the answers. Ask the trees when you're out on a walk. Put your hands on the tree. Ask it. You know, trees have so much wisdom. They have so much wisdom to share with us. It's just that we don't listen. We don't develop a way to listen. We have many... Um, so gratitude is another thing that has been something I need to have in my life, that I want in my life. Uh, to know every day that I'm grateful for all my senses, that I can hear, see, touch, smell, taste. And my sixth sense, you know, that intuitive ability that we all have, that we don't necessarily work on, but... Uh, we do have an intuitive ability. We can connect to that intuition through our higher self. We can sense um, and hear things, you know, whispers in the wind and um, putting your hand on a tree and just breathing deep and connecting um, and asking questions, asking questions, because if you ask questions, um, the answers will come. So, um, yeah, so going inward for some might be a very strange thing. Maybe it's uncomfortable for people. But going in is the only way to connect to you. And so f the fall is approaching us. It's a time also of not only change, but of letting go. So the leaves are falling. The flowers are starting to die off. You know, the plants will wilt and decay. So it's a time of disintegration, disintegration of things falling down, going down and uh, back to the earth. So it's a good time to let go of what no longer serves you. And um, you can do it by journaling, you can do it by meditating, you can do it by releasing your emotions. You can do it by exercising. Um, a physical release for me is, is a good thing for me to do when I have a lot of heavier emotions and I just don't know uh, what to do with them maybe. And so if I can go out and uh, especially with COVID, I've been walking almost daily. And if I go into a soccer field or a baseball field somewhere, or a nice piece of grass or greenery, and I can do some push-ups and sit-ups and high knees and in and outs and do all kinds of cardio kind of, even if I give myself 10 or 15 minutes of that, I can, when I'm finished, I feel so good because I feel like I've released, you know, all that, the blood pumping through your heart, all the oxygen going through your body. You feel so good. It's so good for your body and you're releasing so much, especially if you have things on your mind that you want to get rid of, 
Whew, that's like so good for you. <laughs> it's so good. So if you have the capability of being physical like that, I highly recommend that. Um, being physical in and of itself for me uh, in that kind of way is a meditation. It's a meditation for me because then I'm focused on that. Anything where you are highly focused is a meditation as far as I'm concerned. Meditation does, doesn't just have to be sitting in yoga pose and closing your eyes and breathing. That is a typical form of meditation. You can do a walking meditation. You can do an eating meditation where you have gratitude for the food you eat. So you chew it several times. Each bite you chew it many times, more than you normally would, so that you can taste. You smell the food, then you chew it a lot, and then you swallow it, and you really pay attention to the food and what it smells like and what it tastes like. You can go even further and you can um, think about how that food got from seed to your table and be grateful for every person that created that along the way. So the farmer who planted the seed or the individual who planted the seed, the person who watered, for, watered the seed for it to grow, the, the person who tended to the plant as it grew into a piece of fruit, the person who picked the fruit, the person who got the fruit from the farm to the, the market where you bought it, the driver who drove it there, um, and then how that you then went and bought that food and brought it home. So there's all these steps and people to be grateful for that got that food to your table. So that's another form of meditation is when you're eating, you're thinking about mindfully about all of that. That's a mindful meditation. There are so many forms of meditation that you could choose to bring um, gratitude to your life, to bring awareness to your life, and to um, allow you to bring peace into your life and gratitude for things. Gratitude is um, really powerful. To have a lot of gratitude brings a lot of peace uh, to you. If you're grateful for the people in your life, for the food on your table, for the ability um, to work and pay your bills, if you're blessed for the, those things to ha happen in your life, the blessings in your life, the people in your life, if you have family, you know, to be grateful for. Yeah, there's so many so many wonderful ways to meditate and have gratitude. Um, as for meditation, I think maybe we can do five breaths together. I think a lot of people get the hang up about meditation because they, they think that, oh, I can't meditate. I'll never stop thinking. My brain is going all the time. And yeah, our brains do go all the time. I am certainly a person who's got my mind on many things all the time. So, um, but... I also love to meditate. I love when I'm able to take that time for myself to do that. Um, so yes, you will always have thoughts. So if you think you're going to, you're not meditating properly because you, your mind is still going like the monkey mind, they call it, that you have thoughts coming all the time. Um, that's not, meditating doesn't mean your thoughts will stop. That's not a part of meditating. If someone has told you that you're going to stop your thoughts, then they're not telling you the truth because meditation will not stop your thoughts. It will slow your thoughts. Um, and as you focus on your breath, you will, you will be slowing your thoughts. And when the thoughts come, because they will come, they won't stop coming. When the thoughts come, you simply see them as clouds going by. You envision them as clouds going by or as ripples on the water going down the river. They're just moving by. They're passing by. They're passing through. Um, that's all you have to do with your thoughts. Your thoughts will never leave you. We're human beings. This is what our mind does. Our ego wants to bring the thoughts into us constantly. Um, but if you can just bring yourself back to your breath, just focus back on your breath, the thoughts will move along and they'll just keep passing through. And you'll say, oh, there's that thought again. Well, okay, you've been aware, you've become aware, there's a thought, now you come back to your breath. 
That's really all you need to do. And eventually you'll be eventually you'll be focusing on your breath and you won't notice the thoughts that are passing by. Uh, you won't be focusing on the thoughts. You'll be focusing on the breath. They'll still be there, but you will be focusing on your breath. So let's give that a go. Let's just do five breaths and then I'll create some sound after perhaps just to finish this off. Um, all right. Let's breathe in deep through your nose into your belly and then breathe out through your nose. I'm going to hold it. When we breathe in, just hold it a little bit at the top and then breathe out. So here we go. And release. Breathe in deep. And release. And again, hold it and release. And again, and release. And one more time, hold it and release. And if you want to open your eyes, that's fine. If you want to keep your eyes closed while I just create a little bit of sound and see what wants to come, you're welcome to just listen with your eyes closed and to continue breathing.
Thanks for listening. Um, I hope uh, that I had something that will um, hit home for you and help you to look inward, to connect to yourself, to love yourself, to be yourself, to allow yourself to just be. Love to you all. Thank you.